Usually the mind delights in running around. There are these currents that go flowing out from the mind. There's sensuality, becoming, ignorance, and they push us, push us, push us. And we don't see it as coercion because we think that these are ours. Their strength is our strength. It's only when we stop to consider, well, where do these things lead us to, that we begin to wonder, where are they coming from and are they really ours? You want to get out of the, li the line of influence, which is one of the reasons why we meditate, to try to get the mind still. It's used to wandering around, so make it still for a bit to see what it's like. In the beginning it's going to be difficult because it goes against the grain, it goes against the currents that you've been following all along. But when you find that you can get a sense of well-being, simply by being here with the breath, the breath comes in, the breath goes out, then it comes in again, goes out again. Each time it comes in, you can make it comfortable. It doesn't have to be the same every time. Each time it comes in, you can ask yourself, what kind of breathing would feel good now? And see where the breath goes. If it doesn't seem to be doing anything, you can help it along a little bit. But give yourself something to do right here. As long as the mind wants to do something, give it something to do that will make it quiet. Make it want to be quiet. And then we're getting a t taste of what it's like to be quiet. Then you can look back at, can look back at being pushed around and begin to see, well, this is not such a good thing after all. Your allegiance hasn't totally changed, but at least the mind is now more open to what the Buddha calls the unafflicted, the state of mind which is not being pushed around, that is not being coerced by anything outside or inside. For the time being, you, you coerce it to make it still, but after all, you begin to realize yeah, it's something really pleasant. And the forces in the mind that push it out, those are the ones that are unpleasant. So to fight their coercion, you have to force yourself for a bit. But when you ever change your heart and change your mind, realize that stillness is a good thing then you can cut, start to cultivate that anywhere you go. You don't have to be sitting here with your eyes closed. The mind has some free moments. Okay, you bring it to the breath. Even when you've got other jobs to do, the part of the mind that likes to cast around for th other things to think about while you're doing your job, well, you can have it think about the breath. Make this your center of gravity. This is where the mind goes when it's not being pushed out. When you've got to give it a good place like this to stay, and then you can really see that the Buddha was right when he said that there is no happiness other than peace. For most of us, our happiness is riding the waves. But then in the Buddha's image, the, the waves come to a waterfall, they come to rapids, they come to whirlpools. In other words, it brings us to danger. Whereas you stay right here, you're safe and with a sense of well-being, a spacious sense of well-being. So try to cultivate this appreciation for stillness as much as you can. We have that chant about have respect for concentration. This is what the Buddha means.